and gentlemen, in today's video, we're in Midtown Manhattan. Now, if you're visiting New York, you will be in this area. This is where Times Square is, Highline, Rockefeller Center, and so much more. We're gonna be visiting some places for you to get to-go meals and some quick and delicious bites. We're talking tacos, sandwiches, bagels, and more. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up to fuel today's adventure. Did you do it? Okay, now we can get started. But first, coffee. Your adventure around New York City cannot start without some proper caffeine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got a treat for you. Today I'm showing you a new coffee spot here in Midtown Manhattan called 10,000 Coffee. Let's go on inside and see what it's all about. 10,000 Coffee is a global coffee brand that was launched in Sydney, Australia in 2018. They use high quality specialty grade beans in all their drinks. Now you can taste the highest quality Australian style coffee in New York. So why is it called 10,000 Coffee? 10,000 Coffee originated from the 10,000 hour rule. It refers to the owner investing 10,000 hours to create this specialty coffee. You can choose from a variety of single origin brew coffee with specialty beans roasted directly from the brewery in Brooklyn. Over here are the bean cards. And on the back, you can get all the info about the coffee that you're drinking, from the tasting notes to the roast, even the acidity level. Look at that. They even tell you right here, highlights the toffee and dark chocolate flavors. I'm waiting for my coffee, but I just love the vibes of this store. It's very modern. It's like a simple minimalism. You can tell that the focus is all about the coffee. When you order the signature espresso and pour over coffee products, they're served with this complimentary pairing menu, which enhances the taste of coffee even more when eaten together. So one of the first items on their signature pairing menu is the espresso. But I got the espresso campana, which is espresso with cream. And look at this. It looks so good. It's like a little dessert. To enhance the flavor of this, they also paired it with some hibiscus tea. This is the first time I've ever been given coffee with tea. It's such a luxurious experience. Do I have something on my lips? I'm getting that shot of caffeine. I'm waking up. <laughs> okay, so here's it with the tea. Oh, oh, that's good hibiscus tea. It's really nice with the acidity and bitterness of the coffee with some like floral scent from the tea. Very good. Guys, it's raining outside. I love a good old sitting in a cafe when it's raining outside. It's very romantic. This is one of the prettiest coffee drinks ever. This is their Espanier coffee. Look at that beautiful cream on top with some cocoa powder. And of course, it is paired with a honey cookie. I'm such a sucker for like beautiful coffee and coffee experiences. <laughs> All right, guys, ready? That is so good. You know why? Because it's not too sweet. Like it still tastes like a very delicious latte with oat milk and the cream doesn't add too much sweetness to it, which is great. Wow, this is really, really good. All right, here we go. Honey cookie pairing. When was the last time you guys got a treat with your coffee? Here we go. Mm. So all the sweetness is coming from this honey cookie and it pairs really well with this coffee here. In case you guys don't want espresso-based drinks and you're looking for something without the coffee, they do have other options, including this sweet potato latte. So there's no espresso in here. Sweet potato latte is just steamed milk with sweet potato. And look how beautiful it is. They also have a matcha, which I highly recommend you guys trying. It looks amazing. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it really tastes like a sweet potato. <laughs> it's like mushing up a sweet potato and adding milk to it. It's so good. I am all caffeinated and ready to go. 
Now guys, 10,000 Coffee just recently opened, but there's already so many customers. When we were filming, people kept coming in and out. So I recommend you guys checking it out early and checking it out now. And on to our next spot. We are at Katagiri Japanese Grocery Store. Now, fun fact, this is the oldest Japanese grocery store in the United States, established in 1907. The oldest one, you guys. <sighs> so there's two of these locations here in Midtown Manhattan. We're here because there's actually a little rice ball store at the front. There's also a Japanese grocery store that you can walk around with and pick up all kinds of food. So let's go check it out. Right when you enter, they're making all the rice balls right there fresh. Look at that. Wow. Wow, look at this. This is so cool. I've never seen this one. It's like a... Soft boiled egg masubi. <laughs> oh, you vlogging? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Do we pay up there? Yeah, yeah. You oh, okay. Did you get anything from the supermarket? You pay all together. Okay, cool. Yeah. We got our rice balls. We're gonna walk around the market and see what else they have. Look, y'all, they have like fresh chirashi bowls. Oh my gosh, freshly made. They also have these to go bento boxes. So we see like teriyaki chicken and like spicy chicken. What is that? Oh, more teriyaki chicken. Wow, this is so clean. Oh, they even have fresh produce. All the sauces you'll ever need for your Japanese cooking. Some dumplings, all the frozen goods. They have everything here. This, is, this market is actually pretty big. I was expecting something small, but it's pretty big. You guys can get sashimi salmon here too. Look. S sushi grade salmon. <gasps> wow. They have so much stuff here, I'm so excited. <laughs> wow, guys, fresh yu choy, $2.91. I think it's more expensive than if you shopped in Chinatown, but it's very, very clean and very fresh. If you live in this area, it's a really great way to access, you know, like fresh a Asian veggies. That grocery store was so cool. I feel like we should do an actual grocery haul and also like sample all their hot foods besides the rice balls. Comment below if you guys think we should go back. I think we should go back. Okay, so. We got two rice balls to go. As you can see, these are their onigiri. We also got a spam masubi for the cameraman. <laughs> go. We won't eat it, but this is what it looks like. It's a little bit like floppy, but it has the basics, just the egg and the spam. And it doesn't look like there's any teriyaki sauce, but we'll see how much Lucas likes it, okay? So right over here, I got the salmon and I got the eel onigiri and I already hand sanitized. Here we go. Mm, it's bad. Oh, the sushi rice is so soft. It's so good. Nice chew. The salmon is nicely salted in there. Very fresh. I was thinking maybe they'll mix it with like salmon and mayo, but this in itself is already enough seasoning. It's very good. I got the eel. You know it's a good place if they have good eel. So here we go. We're going to buy into it. I love the way it's shaped. It's like a little hat. Okay, here we go. That's really good eel. Really good sauce too. It's not much, it's just a strip, but it's honestly enough flavor. Same thing with the salmon. The filling is like, I think it's a good filling ratio. Yeah, they definitely perfected the art of the onigiri with the masubi. Both. Is it both? We will Google it and tell you right here. Onigiri vs masubi. The confusion is real. To some things up, onigiri and masubi are the same and is often referred to as masubi onigiri, o masubi, nigiri mishi, or simply as rice balls. The term masubi can also refer to spam masubi, which is not the same as onigiri and instead is a Hawaiian dish with strong Japanese influences. So this is spam masubi, this is more Hawaiian. But this, the onigiri masubi, is the Japanese rice balls. You learn something new every day You're on this channel. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Super excited about this. This is my favorite taco place in Manhattan. Okay, Lowe's Tacos number one. Now there's a variety of locations. I think there's four locations here in Manhattan. So just check to make sure which one's close to you. This one is close to Karagiri Grocery Store. Let's go on inside and get the best tacos ever. Ever. Finally, we're covering Lowe's Tacos. I'm in the corner here. I'm getting some pico de gallo, some sauces. They also have salsa here. Oh, this green sauce is absolute smackery. <laughs> We're inside Los Tacos number one. Now, fun fact, when I first moved here, each tacos were $3.25. They are now $4.75. Carne asada is $4.95, so inflation, baby. But honestly, they're still the best taco in Manhattan, so 
here we go. I ordered over here. This is the pollo. I put some of the green sauce on it, put some salsa on it. I'm ready. Let's take a bite into this. Seasoned beautifully. The sauce, spicy kick. Everything is so fresh. Just the perfect bite. Once again, it truly is the number one taco in Manhattan. In Manhattan, not New York City, okay? Because there's some good taco places in Jackson Heights. It's really rare to get cactus tacos here in Manhattan. So I wanted to get it because it's very, very good. And especially for my veggie friendly friends. Now you guys know you have an option here. So here we go. Mm. Mm. If you guys ever had cactus before, they are so juicy. They have this nice soft crunch and they're just juicy, juicy inside. It's such a wonderful texture. It's almost like biting into this savory fruit. It is so good. If you've never tried cactus before, highly recommend. All right guys, they're marinated pork taco. Now you know it's authentic when they put the slices of pineapple on top. That's when you know they don't mess around. Look how much meat they put in this taco. It's insane, they stuffed it. They stuffed this taco. I wanna get a bite of everything, the onions, the cilantro, the pork, the pineapple. Here we go. The pork is so tender and juicy, okay? I think juicy is the word to describe all of their meat option here. Along with the pineapple that adds a nice sweetness to cut in that savory pork, just delicious. I need another bite, this is so good. I come here and get the tacos, but one time I went with my friends and we got their quesadilla especial. It's a fried quesadilla and I filled it with a carne asada and oh my gosh, the first time I bit into this, heaven. Look at this crispy goodness. Ah, I'm so excited. All right, here we go. crisp on the outer layer, insane. It is so flaky, it just falls apart in your mouth. The amount of cheese, when you bite into that cheese, it's just savory, cheesy goodness, immediately met with the flavorful beef, and of course, some freshness from the guac. It is just perfection. Lord. So when you enter and you order, they'll give you a ticket. You have to give the ticket to the taco masters at the front of the counter. No ticket, no taco. It's nice because they have low monitors for you guys to order. So you see they have bowls right here, chicken bowl, uh, grilled pork, beef bulgogi, but they also have sandwiches, which is what we're here for. So they have the traditional uh, sweet joju bami, which is a classic Vietnamese sandwich, or they have a more fusion sandwich, which is the beef bulgogi bami right here. So Korean style, thinly sliced ribeye beef. So, uh, fries, summer rolls, and they also have drinks. Perfect, so we're gonna put in our order and then we'll have it come out. I made this joke before. Oh, darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, darling, stand by me. Those people in this restaurant, I will try not to be weird. Mic check, one, two. So Joju is a fast casual spot. They call it modern Vietnamese sandwiches. They kind of take like classic Vietnamese sandwiches, but twist it with different flavors. For example, this is their sweet Joju sandwich. And what's kind of the twist, I think, is that they add caramel pork in there. So if you guys look at that, it's like super marinated, but it has all the classic elements that a good Viet sandwich should have. You got the ham, you got the veggies, you got the nice bread, you got the mayo. So let's take a bite of this. Mm. Before I give you the verdict, I need to take a bite right here with all the meat, ready? This caramel pork right here, brings so much sweet, delicious flavor to the entire sandwich. It is delicious. The bread is okay. I wouldn't say it's like the toastiest, freshest bread. However, the fillings is so good. Fresh carrots and daikon, fresh cucumber, nice caramel pork, and of course, all these Viet ham right here with the mayo. Wonderful, wonderful flavors. Wow, look at the amount of pork they pack it with. It's great. I think it's the, the sweet pork in here. It really adds another layer of flavor to like a traditional banh mi. 
very good. Very surprising. This is actually quite delicious. I wish the bread was a little warmer and toastier, but besides that, the sandwich is great. Super great for a quick lunch. Yeah, nice little twist to a classic. It's not like a very traditional Viet sandwich. If you're craving a very traditional banh mi, definitely go to the many banh mi places recommended in Chinatown or in like Brooklyn Chinatown. Um, but this is not bad for this area. You have to remember this area is catering to a lot of people working in the offices here or to travelers. So of course they're gonna have a more like fusionist flavor, but this is honestly pretty good. Like I'm very surprised by the sweet pork and the way it kind of adds just so much dimension to the sandwich. Yeah. Stand by me when you are. I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> like the Michelin man. So we're here at Liberty Bagels. They have old fashioned hand rolled bagels, kettle boiled bagels. They're highly rated. So let's go on inside and see. Yeah, there's so many different flavors. They have Oreo, they have birthday cake cream cheese. They got the classic, some strawberries. What? They have maple bacon, maple bacon. Are you serious? Honey bacon sriracha, avocado and herb. <laughs> There's so many cool flavors. I made a really big mistake. I forgot to get them toasted. <laughs> I'm so sad. You have to ask to get them toasted here. They do not ask you. They don't do it automatically. So just make sure you guys get it toasted. But hopefully, it's still good. So I got the highly recommended French toast bagel. Look at this. And I got maple bacon cream cheese with it. Look at that. Maple bacon French toast bagel. I've never seen a French toast bagel before. I'm pretty excited. You can already tell that it looks really soft. Look at that. Mm, I'm going this side. More cream cheese. The cinnamon on this bagel is fantastic. It actually tastes like a delicious French toast, but in a bagel. The star of the show, in my opinion, is this cream cheese. It is so incredibly creamy, so decadent. This is actually really, really good. I think if I toasted it, it would take it to another level, but the fact that even without toasting it, it is so soft already, that's a good bagel. Mmm, oh my god. <laughs> so this is the jalapeno cheddar cheese bagel with lox and scallion cream cheese. Mm. Mm, oh, that's so good. The bagel is so soft. Even though it's not toasted, you can tell that it's freshly baked. This lox cream cheese is amazing. Savory, got little pieces of lox in there. And of course, the cream cheese is just so dang creamy. Mm. And now I'm getting little spice kicks for the jalapeno in the bagel. That was wonderful. I really, that was really good. Good spot, y'all. Liberty Bagels. There you go. Hand rolled bagels, kettle boiled bagels, right here, right here. So I forgot to tell you guys, they also have the rainbow bagel here, but I wouldn't say it's the original rainbow bagel. We've done a video on that before, and we all know where that is in Brooklyn. But just so you know, in case you want to grab one while you're here. Y'all, I'm super excited about this. We are back in Hell's Kitchen. I actually live around here, so it's really nice to see some of my favorite restaurants. One of the places I love going is Empanada Mama. So it's a Latin restaurant here in Hell's Kitchen, and it's actually 24 hours. So you guys can get empanadas all day. So I asked if I like chicken, which one to get? And he said to get the jerk chicken with the Swiss cheese right here. It's freshly fried. You do have to wait a bit, which is good because that means it's fresh. Here we go. Mmm, mm. it's like a very, very savory buffalo sauce, okay? This is jerk chicken, so it's very, very savory. So much flavor, so much chicken. Look at this, look at the way it's stuffed. There's so much filling in here. They definitely pack it to the rim. And the crisp on the outside is wonderful. It's crunchy, it's flaky. Everything a good empanada should be. Really, really good. It could be a little bit on the savory side, like a little bit too salty but there's so much flavor. 
You know, I think the outer layer kind of balances it out pretty well. It's pretty good. It's very fresh, nice and crispy and hot and warm. That's what you want on a cold day in New York City. It's a seafood one, actually. This will be crab and shrimp inside. So let's open it up. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh, there's so much shrimp in here. Ooh, it's a crab and shrimp filling. And they actually really packed this. And this was like $4.75. Okay, here we go. Let's take a bite. Ready? Mmm. Mmm. I really like this one. I've never had a seafood empanada before, but this is so enjoyable. So it's got like this light tomato sauce taste to it, but then you get such great bites from the shrimp and there's so much crab in here. It's actually a really wonderful combo. So it's like a seafood stew inside an empanada. I actually really like it. I really like seafood. It's an interesting kind of texture combo. I've never had it before, but it's really good. I really like it. Mm. I'll tell you guys what, I think a whole one, like a whole seafood empanada is maybe too much. But if you guys can like split it with a friend, each take a half, I think that'll be the way to go. By the way guys, there's actually heaters in their outdoor seating, which is very thoughtful. <laughs> so if you guys want to get it to go, eat it outside, you can. For the very last one, I wanted to try a more dessert empanada. This is their guava and cheese empanada. It's called Romeo and Juliet. Very romantic. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Oh, it's so nice and fresh and hot. It's still warm. All right, here we go, guys. It's like a strip of jam of guava cheese. Okay, I was not expecting it to be so filled with cheese, but I'm really excited. There's like a layer of guava jam here. So here we go. Mmm. Wow. That, that real thing good. The savory stringy cheese, along with the sweet guava jam and the crispy outer layer, and there's powdered sugar. Everything in one bite is just magical. Wow, that was delicious. I don't know why, but when I saw this, I was just thinking about Disneyland beignets and how good it was on the first bite. This brought me back to Disneyland. I have no idea why. I think it's just the flavor and the way it's like presented. I think it was just the happiness from the bite that I just took. Wow, that was really, really good. Oh, and there we go, ladies and gentlemen. What a food tour, huh? We got tacos, we got sandwiches, we even got coffee. And now you guys know a few places to go if you're ever looking for a quick bite here in Midtown Manhattan. Of course, we barely scratched the surface. We didn't even get to the pizza. We didn't even stop by K-Town. You know why? Because those will be in other videos, so make sure you like and subscribe. Okay, <laughs> and now it's part of the video where I turn it back to you and ask which of the items that we tried today would you love to try? Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. I love y'all, appreciate all. And now I'm gonna get out of this cold because it is freezing. I feel like a popsicle. <laughs> it's all cold. <laughs>